Hello everyone! We are to our second set of notes titled Grapes. This is not a reference to the little yellow animated duck that walks up to the lemonade stand asking for grapes. Instead, this is a way that we can sort through our civilizations and understand the elements of each of them. So we will return to our grapes acronym throughout the year and sort the information we learned into the G-R-A-P-E-S. So you need to watch this video. It's almost three minutes long. So pause this video that you're listening to so that you can watch the Ancient Civilizations Grape video. All right, moving on. So if you have resumed this video, that means you have watched the other one, the fun, catchy song one. So G stands for geography, and geography deals with location. We ask ourselves, where are we people located? What is around them? What are the natural features, i.e. landforms, and their resources? So an example for our Egyptian unit. Most civilizations are located near the Nile River or very close to the Nile River, which runs through Egypt, which is on the continent Africa. It is in a desert. There is the Red Sea beside Egypt and some other bodies of water. And then we can get into the what those natural resources are that they're also going to trade with. Religion. Religion deals with worship and people's faith-based belief systems. In this course, we learn about the five major world religions, Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Islam. Now, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all have ties to Abraham. We're also going to learn the words monotheistic and polytheistic. So the root word mono means one, and the root word poly means many. Now the root word hidden mean here, you can also see it as theo, but we see the T-H-E-I, T-H-E-I, that is talking about God. So monotheistic is worshiping one God, whereas polytheistic, worshiping many gods. All humans were polytheistic, and most of them, but not all, will convert to monotheistic religions throughout history. Achievements. A. What are the civilizations known for? What is their lasting impact on the world today? What do we know them for? Some categories of achievements could include architecture, art, inventions, philosophy, mathematics, science. We could also include government in there, Greece and Rome. Uh, we'll talk about the philosophers, um, Socrates, Aristotle, Plato. Well, the U.S., uh, when it was creating its government, pulled on the Republican ideals um, to create this U.S. government that was to be an experiment. If you look at our government buildings. They have the pendulum and the different columns. That is an architectural achievement that we're pulling from the Greco-Roman revival world, or the Greco-Roman world that we revitalize. Every civilization has some mathematic and some science lasting impressions um, that have improved our knowledge. Pythagorean theorem, figuring out angles for triangles, all those lovely things that you get to learn in school. P in grape stands for politics. So politics looks at those in power. Who has rights? Who makes the laws? Who enforces the laws? And politics ties really well into our S, but let me go over the E first. Economics. This is the hardest category in grapes for students. You might have talked about in math class the cost of something, but actually understanding the economic systems is a bit deeper. So 
so we ask ourselves, who are people trading with? Are they bartering? Like, I have this pencil, you have that piece of gum, and we'll trade. Is there a monetary system where, no, I won't accept your piece of gum for the pencil, but you have to give me a certain amount of money? What are the jobs available? And economics will tie into the location and those natural resources. A phrase you will hear me repeat often, specialization of labor. So in unit two, our next unit, humans roamed the earth. They lived this nomadic lifestyle. And when they realize, they discover the invention of farming that they can control their food supply, they will then build communities around this land that they're gonna farm. Well, over time, not all of us have to be farmers because farmer A is producing more than he needs, so he's gonna sell it. So this opens up other professions like becoming scribes or priests or lawyers or shopkeepers. And eventually, some of those people in those different professions are going to rise and form the middle or upper class. So in social structure, that's our S, social structure is in the shape of a pyramid. So put your two fingers together and try to create a pyramid. There are more people in the base level. So that's why we use the pyramid shape, because there are more people in the base level. Unfortunately, they also have fewer powers and rights than the groups that have smaller numbers up top but carry most of the power. And this example of social structure is from our last unit when we get into medieval Europe.